Yo, what's good, guys? It's your boy. Today's video, the second installment in the live match series, this time against Sky Surker. If you missed the first one, go watch it right now. It is going to be in the September 2019 playlist that I have going on for the September 2019 format. And in fact, I do recommend you guys check out every single one of those videos if you are into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! to learn the format. So before the match starts, hit the subscribe button. You already know the drill. Notification squad, what are you saying? Hit that notification bell right away and enjoy as I absolutely massacre Sky Strikers. Now, a lot of you have trouble beating Sky Striker, and I don't know why. We lose the die roll there, and it's totally cool. Because you see, the way you have to build your pendulum deck, it has to be that... It doesn't matter if you lose the die roll. That's how you must build it. But too many of you guys are too focused with the pendulum deck going first or whatever it may be. And you just need the right mix of going second cards in the deck. And you're going to see just how amazing they are as I play. Now, it's going to be a long match. I'm actually making this match three times the actual speed of the actual video. Because, uh, yeah, who's trying to watch a 50-minute match here? It was actually 50 minutes, like an hour even. There you see the blue boy card I put on. The blue, I'm telling you right now, man. The Spellbook Engine in Pendulum is amazing. We do play nine cards, like Servant, Abductor, Mastery. And if you draw one of the Spellbook cards, it ends up making those cards insane. But we didn't draw it in conjunction here. I believe I actually ended up drawing at the very end, I believe. But you're going to see, like, the blue boy is insane. It actually forces him to use a Widow. And he didn't use a Widow there, so... It, that kind of tells me it doesn't have a Widow. And again, even if he did use the Widow, I end up having... If I have another Secrets in hand, I can just search the Knowledge and still use it. So, drawing... Mul and even drawing multiples is fine. Drawing multiples of the Blue Boy Engine, just the best hand trap bait. Because you hand you, you bait their hand trap and at the belly, you still end up drawing two. So here are Desires. And as you see, I did draw two, draw two. You now see just how crazy the deck is. My... I missed it earlier, but my I didn't mention that my Destrudo got... I use, use, sent a Destrudo instead of Dark Worm. Going second, it's always the best play, and he ends up belling it. But that's totally fine, because that means next turn the, the, the Destrudo is going to be available. I draw the Abductor. I show him. I show the opponent. I'm like, yo, after uh, I draw five cards, I draw Abductor at the very end. But if I had a Abductor one card earlier, I could have resolved it. But it's a, totally cool. Uh, you see all the spells now, just how consistent the deck actually is. Uh, you just wasted one. Like I have six cards in hand, but my opponent already wasted one of his interruptions. I have a card on field. So I have seven cards, and he already wasted one of his interruptions. And realistically, how much uh, interruption that striker is going to get? I pen call my extra dragon shrine over there, and now uh, just like that, I still have so much plays I could do. I, I think a lot here because I know he plays there can be only one, and a lot of strikers players are going to play the Salon cards or there can be only one. So I know that you know what? I'll take a risk. I don't know if he has Solemns in there. I'll take a risk and dragon pit one of the interruptions now. So I end up discarding the abductor. To get rid of one of the interruptions, and I get rid of a shark cannon. So there's two interruptions are gone. A little slowly. There we go, the shark cannon. Uh, two interruptions gone. And the game plan so far, so far, we're sticking to our game plan. We're getting rid of cards one by one. We enter the void. So I'm like, you know what? If he has a strike, he has a strike. You can't be scared of cards like that all the time. You got rid of two interruptions already. And I'm assuming that's going to be uh, uh, another wi a widow or something like that that he's been saving. They didn't use it in the blue boy. There's somebody, oh, maybe he was sa he was scared I had another secrets to still draw two. So I'm like, there's probably another widow. So we there's a bell, there's a shark cannon. So let's go, let's bait him. Let's go electrum and bait him. Because I know the end goal here, I want to utopia double him. So you're gonna just bait the life out of him, utilizing the just the normal pendulum combo. Like, I'm just gonna go electrum here with a little slow here, dragon collar and curtain razor, and then he has to activate his widow or else he loses. Little does he know I play double or nothing, and that's how I'm just gonna obliterate him. And you got to play the deck like this. This is why you play Utopia Double. Because Galatea is always going to be on board. Striker cards are going to always going to be on board. Wolf is going to be on board. All these cards are under 2,000. And there we go. OTK just like that. Through three interruptions. Through a Widow, through a Bell, and through a Shark Cannon. How many Pendulum players could do that? Not many. Like your Dark Worm is never going to resolve. Your Distrudo is never going to resolve. None of that's ever going to resolve. Plus the Widow. But because you play decks like this that are forced... You plus like crazy, the interruptions are there. You you don't just beat and you OTK him because you have to engage in there too. Like that's an OTK through Ray, and a lot of you guys have problems doing that because the thing with Sky Strikers, and I believe it's a I believe it's a big reason why you guys do lose to Sky Striker a lot. I do find that uh, a lot of people lose to Sky Strikers because they don't OTK them on that turn. If you don't OTK them after they set up Shizuku, one engage goes a long way. I was telling the opponent here while we we're after we we're signing, one engage 
One engage could turn into five cards by the end of it, especially when you have three spells in grave, as Skysakers always do after their first turn. Now, one thing to know about siding, okay? I want to teach you guys how to side. A lot of you don't know how to side properly against Sky Striker. That was just a proper way to beat them going first. I bait all their interruption. It's how you destroy Sky Striker. Now, I do believe Sky Striker is going to be the most played deck this format. So I want you guys to pay close attention here. What did I side deck? Nothing. I didn't side anything. I'm wary. I understand that Strikers are going to be the most prominent deck this format. Hence, I build the main deck almost pre-sided. Like, the main deck, we don't play Dynarest or Denko or shit like that, but you don't need these cards to destroy Strikers. Strikers are very easy to beat, especially when you don't know if you're going first or second. I don't know if he's going to make me go first. I don't know if he's going to make me go second. I really don't know. Hence, I was like, you know what? Don't side cards like that because you don't know if you're going first or second. So you play cards like Garuda. You play cards like Eccentric. You play cards like Cerberus to get it. You play all these cards, and Ash is going to... There's so much, like, the... The bait that Cerberus can get Ash is a fine debate, but keep in mind, you play Blue Boy, Dual Slimes, Pen Call, Shrine, like, Servant, like, sure, like, uh, Blue Boy's getting Ash, bro, not your Cerberus, they don't care about the one for one, they're trying to Ash the two for one. So here, little by little, want to pop, a little by little, I get, I end up popping the Afterburner, like, uh, it's a very unfortunate for me, if I popped one of the other cards, it would have been fine, and then, uh, he's still scared here, he wants to wait until I utilize more of my cards, I pop, there can be only one. But he ends up not flipping. He told me later in the duel, he told me he didn't flip the There Can Be Only One simply because he wanted me to keep going into my combos knowing that Yazi was coming. And then he flips his second There Can Be Only One. I'm like, yo, get wrecked. My Mare Mare's done. Because he knows and he sees me in locals destroy everyone with Mare Mare. And Mare Mare is just, it's the be all end all. Mare Mare and Utopia Double, it's the be all end all. In fact, funny situation, if I actually went straight into Utopia Double, that was game. Uh, but he. That would like that would have been game right away because he was saving it from the Mare Mare knowing it was coming because Mare Mare would have, Mare Mare resolving uh, would have still end up on Utopia Double after popping his interruptions. So, uh, but it, it ended up not working there for me. So he multi rolls there. There can be only one. And now you're gonna see just how much uh, one engage can go. Just as I told you in the beginning. Now look at the field. Okay, I want you guys to look at the field. There's a reason I'm not scooping. Okay, obviously he's gonna clear my entire field and I'm gonna be left to top decking. Now. You guys gotta understand, okay? Strikers are very bad in the grind game. Now, let me introduce to you the Pendulum vs. Striker grind game, all right? This grind game literally took 40 minutes alone. The game alone, it would've ended on a draw 1-1 with time rules, but uh, anyway, I realized it was real time rules, I would've scoop, obviously, but this is how you beat the Striker deck. You just outgrind them, okay? I put this on seven times the speed versus the three times the speed that we had for the beginning of the video so far. And you're just going to look how I grind him. I literally just summon poison and wait for him to uh, exhaust all of his resources little by little, little by little. He may have five cards in hand, but and he's going to set five and have five cards in hand by the end of it. But I'm like, good. And draw all the engages you possibly can. Look at that. Like, how am I going to deal with this, right? A lot of you would just scoop. I have no cards in hand, like nothing. But I'm like, yo, little by little, I'm going to pop every single thing he has. Little by little, one by one, no matter what. Just little by little. You're going to exhaust all his resources until eventually he's out. I'm literally, this is a 40-minute game we're talking about. But like I said, I'm putting this on seven times the speed. Just so you guys understand, all I'm doing, in fact, I made a big misplay there. I would have won the duel. Uh, big misplay. He MSD's my Dragon Pit while Time Gazer was on scale. And I didn't realize at all. So it was a huge mistake on my end. I never miss Time Gazer. I'm always, I always pro play the opponent with Time Gazer. But the one time I missed it, I couldn't believe it. I would have actually won it. I would have been insane So you for you guys to see this on video. I could have won this entire game, even though I was down like minus eight cards in card advantage. But I was didn't even realize my time gazer was on field. So what a gigantic mistake. Uh, so never forget that time gazer can protect your scales. I was so disappointed with myself. But again, just because you make a misplay, you can't let the whole game go down the drain just because of your one misplay. So I told myself, I'm like, you know what? The game's not over. I'm going to win no matter what. I made a misplay, but I'm just never going to give up. So here what I do, he, has, he goes, puts his boss monster up top of logic. I pen summon, but he saves it with Ego Booster. After he attacks, I'm at 100 life points at this point. I'm like, okay, I could clear his board, and I just got to hope he doesn't have a raid. I looked at his graveyard. Every single Sky Circuit card in his entire deck is in the graveyard right now. So the only card left for him to win is a Ray. If he has a Ray in hand, I lose. Otherwise, I win the duel after going minus 8. And just like that, he had the Ray and Hayate for game. Uh, and just like that, you see how close I was to win. And I was so damn close, even though I was down by 8 cards. 
So what we're gonna do now is I just want to tell you guys never give up no matter what. I almost came back down eight card advantage to Sky Striker. The grind game of Striker sucks. You'll be surprised how far a pendulum summon one card can go, especially a purple poison to pop the roll, etc. Now we're gonna put the speed back to three times the speed and go into game three. And this game three is a doozy where I play through some crazy stuff. Now we're back at three times the speed, and as you see, I got Curtain Razor and Blue Boy, my favorite. Again, I actually you're gonna have to understand this, okay? The thing with Blue Boy is that it plays around everything, okay? He is gonna be forced to stop, and if he doesn't stop it, then it just shows me he has no hand trap, no, no ash, no nothing. Now, we have Servant, and as you see, a god opening, obviously, but there's one issue with this hand that stops everything from, uh, that stops it playing over Nibiru, and that was that we hard drew Jackal. So, even though, that's also, you play 60 not to draw the card you don't want to draw. That's another reason why you play 60. You have to use Servant to bring out Endymion, and just like that, I don't have my Jackal. And I'm like, God damn it. If he has Nibiru, I get wrecked. So I end up pro-playing him. I'm asking, yo, Jackal. Or, yo, oh yeah, Jackal. No, you don't have Nibiru. Nibiru, Nibiru, Nibiru. I keep on bringing up Nibiru to him. And I just read that he had no Nibiru. And spoiler alert, I'm about to get absolutely wrecked by a Nibiru over here. But because we hard drew the Jackal. And that's a, actually a reason I was thinking about not even summoning the Blue Boy in order to tribute summon the Jackal. And it's one of the only situations you don't want to summon the Blue Boy. But having the Blue Boy in hand is fine. As worst case scenario, you can always Pendulum summon it and have it used as a, as a link fodder for the Guard Dragon combo. Because now with the Guard Dragon combo, you guys got to understand that the deck is not dead uh, if you draw these cards. And just like that, he wanted to wait for me to extend all my cards out of Nibiru a little earlier. But he wanted to make sure uh, I used, utilized all my resources. I would have done it straight on Electrum. But he was scared I could do more because he sees what I do all the time. So what he ends up doing is popping my entire field, or stripping my entire field. But you didn't even normal so attribute some Pendulum Summon yet. So you guys got to understand, even though you didn't Pendulum Summon yet, you, you could, even through Nibiru, you could still put up a board. Like, you could still put up a board through Nibiru, no problem. And end up just sum, uh, Pendulum Summoning the Jackal and the Zephyr Nui. We have a Dragon Shrine in our hand that we dead drew. We dead drew a lot of cards within this, but that's totally fine. Uh, I'm now going to go into B Cop. B Cop uses without tokens is great. And you're going to go Shrine first to put up a counter on Jackal in case he has another hand trap. And even through Nibiru, we're going to set up the full Guard Dragon combo. Even through Nibiru, which is insane. And through Nibiru, bro. Like, we're talking through Nibiru, you're going to have the full Guard Dragon combo plus a Zephyr Nui Divine, and Divine Strike. So, that's what I'm talking about. You got to save your Shrines when you can. You got the Distrito in there. Like, it's, I'm telling you, this deck is a lot better than you think. And we're going to... He actually misplaced himself over here. What he should have done is attack into Nibiru with Seal. And of course, I would have let it die. But that would have let his... And then I should have negate the terraforming. So what I should have done is negate the terraforming. Uh, and then the attack... Uh, he was going to attack. So that was a big mistake on my end. Because I thought I was just going to save the Seal for that. And we both uh, made a mistake there. Because it ended up working out for me because he didn't attack. But the best thing to do is always ensure if, he, if the striker player Nibiru is you... You gotta negate every single card possible that's gonna let him use his cards. So I would have ended up negating the the area zero regardless, and he would have summoned out the ray. But I just let him have a free spell card in there for nothing. So you want to negate all his cards possible. He's playing striker, so obviously he can't use his cards unless he has area zero on roll. So even though he cleared my board, there's nothing else he could do. And at this point, the video actually is about to die. My phone dies. He's gonna pass his turn with double engage. He has a double engage, a twin twister, and the area zero I just bounced back. So he makes a mistake over there on his end uh, by not by not simply attacking. He obviously, and the Vortex 3000, can't attack that, but he should have attacked the seal. And in doing so on my turn, I simply go Boral Sword, Vortex, game, and I OTK him. He had double engage in hand. He had a broken hand, double engage in Nibiru with roll and area zero. And he just couldn't pop the Nibiru because even through the Nibiru, we still ended up getting enough negates to negate the card. So, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.